Stephen, um, you, um, your leader, Keir Starmer, did, um, I think he had one line about immigration in his conference speech, which was basically saying he also supported a points-based system. Um, I wonder if you can perhaps tell us a little bit more about whether you're happy with the system as it is or whether you would have a, a very different kind of points-based system. And also, I might just um, ask a perhaps slightly cheeky question. I mean, do you not actually see an opportunity to completely and utterly nail down the next election by actually <laughs> outflanking the Conservatives on, on immigration and having a more restrictive policy than the relatively open and liberal one that we've been hearing about? Thanks, David. Um, some great questions there. I hope to, hope to be able to address them. I'm not going to be able to write Labour's manifesto right here and now, much as I'm sure Policy Exchange would love me uh, to do that. But uh, I thought I'd just maybe start by saying what it is that we want to achieve across the entirety of our economic policy and that our immigration policy has to be a subset of that. And we want a high-wage, high-productivity economy, which is driving growth in a sustainable way. I think most people recognise that there's been for a very long time now a productivity crisis in the UK and that's one of the main reasons that we've had anemic growth. There's a whole range of reasons um, around uh, what, you know, why we have such low productivity, not least the way in which the trade unions have been smashed uh, since the 1980s. But that's of course a topic for another day. I think that um, immigration does play a role and has played a role in undermining productivity for many of the reasons that Nick and others have set out because you can end up using it as a crutch uh, to, um, to uh, deploy uh, lab relatively low wage labour instead of uh, investing in technology and plant and machinery etc. So I think, we, I think there's a high degree of consensus on this panel um, that if the driver is about uh, the right kind of economic growth and addressing the productivity crisis we need to see it in this context. Labour is absolutely clear, as Keir did say in his speech, that we would do not support a return to free movement of labour. We do support a points-based uh, immigration system, but our view is that the one that is currently in place now, the way in which it's sort of been interpreted in, and put in place since 2019, particularly since uh, Boris Johnson was Prime Minister, if anyone can remember how long ago that was, few things have changed since then, um, that is not fit for purpose. And it's not fit for purpose for a number of reasons. It, it's not balancing this need to train up and uh, recruit uh, our local homegrown talent against the need to uh, recognise that in some sectors, for the reasons that we've just discussed, we might not like it, but it's a reality that some sectors have become reliant on, uh, they became reliant on free movement, they become reliant on certain types of um, immigrant labour, and if you turn the tap off uh, for those sectors, those industries uh, may well fall over. So it's a balancing act. I suppose it's about this tension between strategy and tactics. If your strategy is what I started out by talking about, how do you make sure your tactics support your strategy uh, and you don't um, cut off your nose to spite your face? As has been recognised, in 2021, the 239,987 work-related visas uh, granted. That was 25% higher than in the last full year. And the number of professions, as Nick was saying, that, that qualify for skilled visas has expanded significantly. Now includes chef, bricklayer, electrician, welder, healthcare worker, whilst um, the government has removed caps on most visa routes. Uh, you set that against the fact that in some of the sectors um, that were reliant on, for example, seasonal workers, we've, we've got 500,000 vacancies in the farming and food sector, and we had to cull 35,000 pigs. Um, it, it doesn't make, seem to make a huge amount of sense that we're, we're doing that. Um, there's also lots of jobs lost in the construction sector, and, and projects are slowing, and that's vital in terms of pushing forward uh, growth as well. So what Labour wants to do is look at some of the weaknesses in the system. We feel that there's too much of a gap, and I'm, I'm sure Madeline might want to comment on this, there's, a, there's too much of a disconnect between the Skills and Productivity Board and the MAC. Uh, we'd like to have a much better conversation between those two, 
particularly around uh, producing the shortage occupation list. So the decisions around shortage occupation lists are <coughs> driven by issues around skills and, and productivity. Um, and we've got another, what hasn't really come up much on the board so far, on the panel so far, is we're worried about increasing cases of undercutting and, and uh, exploitation. Uh, un unscrupulous employers and particularly re recruitment agencies uh, are not doing uh, enough to, uh, to be sure that uh, exploitation isn't happening. In we're seeing increases in bonded labour. Part of this is, of course, because we're now getting more and more uh, uh, workers coming from outside the European Union. In fact, m much of the relationship with, for example, recruitment <coughs> agencies operating in the European Union was more regulated than we're seeing from countries like Indonesia and Nepal and others. So there's a real issue there. I think a bit of a ticking time bomb around increased uh, exploitation. So um, we want to review the decision around scrapping the resident labour market test. I personally have major question marks about whether that was the right thing to do. Uh, again, I can't, I can't write our manifesto here. We certainly want to review in that and look at that very hard. We want, as I said, the Migration Advisory Committee and the Productivity and Skills Board uh, to work in tandem. We want to end the undercutting of wages and conditions uh, and put that together with a broader strategy around uh, workforce planning. So uh, our thinking around this would be to have a proper conversation happening between uh, government and trade union, trade uni trades unions and uh, industry and employers around a workforce plan, which states very clearly that over, for example, a three-year period, uh, this is what we're going to do to train and recruit and develop skills and invest in the skills of our people uh, and of our homegrown talent. In return for that, you have a conversation about what you may need in terms of labour coming from outside the country to ensure that as you ramp up on the former, you can ramp down on the latter <coughs> because the overall objective is to make, buy and sell more in Britain, to have our economy really firing, to have that productivity, to get the skills uh, and the recruitment and the development that we need to see. So that would be the first thing, is a, is a if you like, a three-way conversation, sector by sector, uh, to get that planning in place. Uh, and the, the leverage, of course, you have is that if you want to be a sponsor employer, this is what you need to do in order to get your licence. I think for too long, the government hasn't had that quid pro quo with employers, where it said, well, what's your plan to develop your workforce in the long run, rather than just using immigration as a crutch, uh, let's actually look at how you balance the two uh, and get a proper strategy in place that makes that ensures that we get the growth that we need, that we get industries not turning the tap off and completely um, destroying that industry because they need that labour, but at the same time showing us what their long-term uh, plan is. And fi a final point on that, just on the um, undercutting issue, uh, we would want to see uh, employers signing up to a good jobs charter, which would have a range of terms and conditions that would be uh, needed in order to be able, again, to get the licence uh, to be able to bring uh, workers in from outside the country. Mm.